you went down to the border just recently, and you were actually reporting on something a little less chaotic this time, which were this, I, I think, the first House Judiciary hearings at Yuma at the border. So tell me about that. So this is like kind of like a, actually a bit of a different yeah. play for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, and it's because it, we've had Democrats who obviously weren't going to do something like that. And, and so, yeah, the House Judiciary Committee had their first field hearing in Yuma, Arizona. Uh, it's a place I've been to many times. Uh, it's, it's a community that's been heavily impacted by the influx of illegal immigration. Uh, and uh, none of the Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee showed up. It was only Republicans. Uh, the Democrats said, well, they didn't consult us on the trip, which is a lie. They, they, the GOP side was telling them about it for over three weeks. They didn't want to see the reality of what was happening. But one of the things that really stuck out to me was that the hearing was held at the Yuma City Hall Council Chamber. And it was open to the public. They reached capacity from the local community because that's how obviously invested they are. One of the things that I've always heard time and again from, from Texas to, to, to Arizona is that the locals feel abandoned by the federal government. And they're, they're, and they're accurate, or they're right to, to a certain extent. They, they've been abandoned by the, federal, uh, by the executive branch. And so to them, to have pretty prominent figures like Jim Jordan, Matt Gates, Dan Bishop come to their town and talk to them about this issue that they've been raising the alarm about for over you know a year and a half now. I mean that means a lot to them. That that uh, you know it's 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 a small gesture to say you know we understand or you know we're here. We want to help you fix this problem, and we're gonna try to you know we're gonna do our best and we're gonna come to you to to try to solve this problem. And you know I talked to a few of the residents and they were they were very happy to to have Congress because understandably that people can be cynical about congressional hearings because like yeah in the past we've had hearings and you know they've made a big scene and then nothing's done about it afterwards that might happen I'm well, not so so this yeah. is this is my yeah. next question right because so it seems like the people appreciate it but you know Congress doesn't have a hugely good reputation of action at the moment certainly in the mind of the populace yeah. And so, I mean, I, on my panel today with uh, the Homeland Security right, well, hello, Committee, um, uh, uh, like Chairman Mar Rosa, Mark Green from Tennessee, he was saying uh, that he, uh, they, they got the most conservative uh, border security bill, that it's ready for markup by the end of March, and they'll put it on the floor by April. So there is going to be follow through. I, I, think, I think the Republican Party really understands that they can't waste this moment. They can't waste the small amount of goodwill that they got from the midterms. And so they're going to actually make an effort to, to solve the problem. What I will say is, unfortunately, uh, because obviously of how the Senate, the Senate elections were decided, but also even if it was, you know, let's say, a slim majority of Republicans, the issue didn't stem, you know, the board crisis didn't stem from the legislative branch. It, it stemmed from the executive branch. So I don't think anything is going to be solved until there's a change to the White House. But then at the same time, we can't just, well, we're going to wait until 2024, because what if 2024 doesn't go Republicans away? Well, then things are going to continue. So um, it, it, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough topic. It's a tough challenge. We'll see what happens. Um, but I, I can just tell you that the locals really appreciate politicians getting out of D.C. and seeing the problem firsthand. Well, but there were some powerful testimonials which were given. Maybe tell me about some of those that you witnessed. Yeah, so the, the Yuma County Sheriff, uh, he, was, he told them that, hey, we've always had problems with cartels, but it's gotten worse than it's ever been in our, in our county history. The, the president of the local hospital, the only major hospital for many, for many miles around, they're out $26 million because of medical care that they've had to provide to illegal immigrants, but they're, they, they're not paying them back, the, the migrants. And so they're losing out on all this money. And because they prioritize care on who needs to see it the most, a lot of times illegal immigrants get, get the priority. And so that has caused a lot of frustration, understandably, with the local community. And the hospital system is only designed to accommodate a population size of around 140,000 between Yuma, San Luis, and, and Gadsden. Over 300,000 people illegally crossed into, into Yuma since, 20, since late 2021. I mean, so three times, you know, over, almost three times the number 
people, and a lot of those people needed significant medical care. So we're, and we're not even talking about broken bones and bumps and bruises and you know some dehydration cases. We're talking about people who need heart surgery. We're talking about mothers delivering and taking up space in the maternity ward, and then their babies need to be in the NICU because they didn't have pre prenatal uh, care during their pregnancies. Because obviously, a lot of the places where they're coming from, that, that doesn't there's just no opportunity to, you know. And that's the thing. We're we're a compassionate nation, as we, and as we should be, but we also shouldn't forget the fact that it's also negatively affecting. The taxpayers, the, the people who are actually are American citizens, and we need to also make sure that we're not leaving American citizens behind either. So it's it's a balance, right? Uh, but they've had to contend with that, while you know the the Biden administration has just says, eh, it's not a big it's not a big deal. Just a few days ago, as we're sitting here, there the New York Times actually published a piece about the children that were in the cages, so to speak, right during the Trump administration. And then they talk about how a lot of these kids are now basically doing child labor as a matter of course. And the, it's a kind of a scathing indictment of what's happened at the border. It was, you know, fascinating to read this piece because let's just say, as you know, there haven't been many yeah. on this topic or anything related, remotely related, uh, uh, criticizing the administration's border policy. So what do you make of that? I, I just think it became a, too big of a problem for even the mainstream media to ignore. I mean, it, it's, it's insane that Secretary Mayorkas in 2000, 2001, he, he said, I, and I believe it was from the White House, from the White House podium, he said, 2021, he, 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 said, he said, any child that comes by themselves to the southern border, we're not going to turn away. Well, what do you think happened after he said that? Parents willingly separated themselves from their kids to send them on a very dangerous journey, if they made it to the southern border, then they continue to get exploited after they get released because HHS and DHS, they're not doing the full background checks. They're not checking up on them. Uh, uh, Tom Homan, former uh, ICE director on the Trump administration, who was on the panel today, he said that HHS has lost track of like around 40,000 kids. I mean, think about that. They, we have no idea where they are. We don't know who they're with. We don't know what they're doing. And so, yeah, some of them have ended up in pretty uh, dangerous jobs, you know, working in meat processing plants, working in packaging facilities. And honestly, and as bad as it sounds, those are the lucky ones because the alternative is sex, sex slavery. And that's why I get, you know, I get so fired up about the issue because this, it didn't need to be this way. I mean, of course, if you say we're not going to turn away unaccompanied minors, yeah, they're going to send them. By themselves. I've, I, I've seen kids as young as seven, six, by themselves, crossing the border without their parents, going who knows where, to who, know, to, to who knows who. And, and it's just the gall that the Biden administration has to say that this is a more humane approach to the, to the border, to immigration. It's, it's a complete lie. It's, it, it is not humane in the slightest. And it, it's, 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 it's avoidable. But they're like, nope. We're going to do it this way. What are the options, right? And sort of, I guess, I mean, I feel like this article kind of intimates that the state should be taking care of all these kids. That's another curious, curious thing. And it's because, again, like, they, they, they think that their way and their approach to trying to help the less fortunate is, is the better way. And, I, again, I have to go back to with how the ripple effects that this will continue to have for years. I mean, even if even if they were to completely reverse the border policies that they've been pursuing now, it's, you know, starting today, it's still gonna it's still gonna be the the secondary and third effects. They're gonna be with us for a very long time. We're gonna be another basically another DACA, another DACA fight because we already had the Dreamers from the first go around back during the Obama administration. There's been so many kids who have been born during this new surge. So now they're going to be another there's going to be another fight about what about these, you know, this next generation of dreamers and all this other stuff and I it's just it's so self-inflicted. That that that's why reporting on it is important because you, you, I've been covering the board since 2019 and things were radically different. <laughs>